This is a box. It's also a tremendous lesson in how to pack retro equipment properly. This is an auction I won and it's from an auction house and inside are two pieces of retro computing which are the most sought after or some of the most sought after in the land. I'm not entirely sure of their condition so let's delve in and find out. It's always a risk when you get equipment through the post but this is a large box and it's very well packed. Lots of paper. Oh, oh yes. So inside are numerous packages. This is a Competition Pro 5000 joystick, one of the best in the world. This is a cheated joystick which says use this joystick you will be a big winner. I'm not joking when I said this was packed well. This is another cheetah joystick, this is a micro switch joystick. A lot of these break but I think this one is in quite good condition. This is a box, just an empty box for a Konex speed kick. Ah, some Spectrum titles. Jurel Big Four, Computer Hits 10, International Match Day and Action Countdown. Game Pack. What is this? This is a deep fat fryer box. I didn't even realise it came with all these. So, there's a lot of stuff I didn't realise I was getting, like this advert, which was obviously issued by Amstrad, telling Sinclair users not to send their broken Spectrum 128Ks to the registration card address. Instead, they should send it to the dealer that they bought the machine from. Anyway, Enough of that, let's move on to the main prizes. The main reason that I bought this lot in the first place. Look at this. This is a ZX Spectrum 128K boxed. Now these are incredibly hard to find, especially in this condition. This is in very nice condition, but look at this box. Look at that, look at it. This is a Spectrum 128K, one of my favourite home computers and one of my first home computers. Let's see if we can have a look at the condition of the... Ah oh, it's not bad. It's not, it's a bit dusty, but... Now these often need new keyboard membranes because that tends to go first. Looks alright, good condition. Serial number... 0705795. And we've also got the free inside ocean games. So we have the never ending story and Daily Thompson Super Test 128, which is an amazing game, but it takes so long to load. Really? We've also got uh, the a Cheetah expansion joystick connector, which is nice. The next item which came with this lot is another boxed computer. Oh my god! Now, these machines, there was actually a run of these. New old stock, available, I think it was 2012 or 2013, which were discovered in a warehouse, and they were sold off for 200 euros each. And there's actually, on the site, there's people complaining about how expensive 200 euros is one of these. You try and find an Amiga 1200 brand new for um, 200 euros nowadays. Not gonna happen. So here we are. This is the Amiga 1200 Magic Pack. Now this is the last Amiga 1200 pack. This was the one released after SCOM bought out Amiga and it was run by Amiga Technologies GmbH and they issued the Amiga Magic Pack. There's two versions of this. There's one with a hard disk and one without a hard disk. This one is the one without the hard disk, so this would have retailed for £399. The hard disk version was £499, but you get a whole swathe of software. I, I have no idea what condition this thing is in. The box looks pristine. So inside we've got gubbins, we've got the actual pack itself. Oh yes, look at the Amiga itself. I love Amiga 1200s. 
Oh, the SCOM models. Of course, look at it. That is a work of art. It's quite um, quite white as well, which is nice. Let's pop the Amiga 1200 out here. So we've got a uh, batch code in here. It says purchase date 8th of November 1995. So this was one purchased back in the 90s. It wasn't one of the, the new old stock. Ah, there is our missing Codex Speed King stowed away. The uh, power supply and an Amiga mouse. Amiga Technologies 3 mouse. So let's have a look and see if these machines actually work, shall we? Because that would be most helpful. But first, a bit of cleaning. Now this 1200 is in pretty good shape. However, there is the odd tea splatter. So I'll give it a quick going over with a fabric stain removing wipe. I seriously recommend these for cleaning up equipment like this. They take off stains easily and even those grubby ingrained areas. And you can slip them in between keys to clean those awkward spaces. But I don't want this to sound too much like a shopping channel, so I'll just use some scissors to clean out the grills. You won't see this on a shopping channel, but seriously, they just scrape off coffee and tea stains straight away and then you can just shake them out. Incidentally, there's no expansion card in this one. It's factory specification all the way, and I quite like that. There we go. Doesn't that look wondrous? So squeaky clean, almost like it's just rolled out of the factory. Ever white brands are available. The mouse and power supply were also grubby as hell, but once again, those wipes came to the rescue. An SCOM mouse mat seems fitting. All right, let's power this beast on. Power light on, floppy disk sounds sounding, but no composite picture. Okay, let's try RF. Ah uh, yes, that seems better. I imagine there's just a loose solder joint which needs reflowing, but I'll take care of that another time. As long as Mortal Kombat loads, then frankly, I'm happy as a cucumber pie, which sounds revolting. Oh, also, all the manuals are present and the software is tucked away in those boxes, so that is nice. Okay, how about that mighty ZX Spectrum 128? Oh, I just love this box. Look, it's just so damn red and boxy. Now, this machine is a little more grubby, but the stain removing wipes make light work of this revolting detritus. A rub here and a rub there and it's almost as good as new. As I've got the TV already set up, I'll try it through RF. There we go. Beautiful. A quick test of the keys confirms to me that most are working but there are a few which fail to respond. Again, a quick fix is a modern keyboard membrane replacement and they cost about a tenner and they're incredibly simple to fit. I'll just plug a tape deck in for peace of mind, and as you can see, the never-ending story loads beautifully. This loading sequence is almost never-ending in itself, so I'll just leave that running. Marvellous stuff! So there we go, two systems which are pretty much working, and that is good enough for me. I'll probably fix up that Amiga 1200 a little bit, Put a new keyboard membrane in this 128, a bit more cleaning, and job is a good one. So, all in all, 100% successful bid. Thanks for watching.